Morning, Yuri. Morning. It's a beautiful morning, but even as we stand here, the air is out of balance. And our world may already be dying. <laughs> That's right. Judy! Well, look who's feeling better. In the past, these slight fluctuations of the air have not negatively affected our world. There have always been beings who maintain the balance by sensing changes in the airflow. Beings like Pharaoh and Ba'ul, the Entelechea. So the Entelechea were responsible for keeping the air balanced? For ages, the Entelechea have regulated the air, but the recent increase has been greater than they could control. Which is being caused by the Hermes Blastia. And which is also why you were going around taking down as many of them as you could. Yes, that was my mission. The path I walk with Ba'ul, to whom I owe my life. The path you walk? Now some would even hunt the Entelechea for Apatheia. This has made the mission of the Entelechea even more difficult. Why is everybody so crazy about these Apatheia anyway? I'm afraid I don't have an answer. The air an Entelechea absorbs becomes condensed within its body over time. When its life is at an end, that condensed air forms a crystal, an Apatheia. That's all I know. I imagine Pharaoh could shed more light on the subject, though. So Epithea are crystals of concentrated air. If that's true and the energy could be extracted from the Epithea, it would be a source of overwhelming power, I'm sure. Could we really do that? I... I don't know. But if that's possible, there must be tons of guys who want those things. I bet somebody wants to use these things for the wrong reasons. Why didn't you just tell us all this from the beginning? Seriously, we could have avoided all this trouble if you just talked to us. Am I wrong? Even if you had known, there are things not even you could have prevented. What do you mean? I showed up at Heliord because Ba'ul had sensed a disturbance in the air. Where there was a disturbance, there was sure to be a Hermes Blastia. But what I found there was not a Blastia, it was a person. That had never happened. So it wasn't like you were looking for Estelle in particular back at Heliard. Yet for some reason, Ba'ul perceived Estelle as a disturbance in the air. I had to find out why. For the sake of the path I've chosen. It was at that time that Pharaoh first appeared. He seemed to have some idea who Estelle was. My mission was to destroy all the Hermes Blastia. However, Estelle was obviously not a Blastia. I needed to make absolutely certain I made a deal with Pharaoh. And he agreed to grant me some time. You mean... If it became apparent that her existence posed too great a threat, then I... I would kill her. You what?! Wait! Rita! Settle down. Obviously Judith reached a different conclusion. All right, I get it. Bellius said you possess a heart of compassion. If you can communicate that to Pharaoh somehow, you may learn what you should do. H hey, there's no real reason for you to fight Pharaoh anymore, right? I mean, we know the Hermes Blastia are what's causing the problem and everything. If we just make sure the Apatheia don't fall into the wrong hands... I still want to meet Pharaoh. I want to hear what he has to tell me. But, please try to understand. I have to know more about myself, and take responsibility for who I am. Alright. Sorry, Yuri. I don't think we can decide what to do about Judith right away. I promise not to leave again until things have been settled, as you said. I need to accept that responsibility myself. Let's go and find Pharaoh. We'll finally be getting around to one of the first things we set out to do. We can work out the rest once this is finished. There is a rocky crag in the center of the sands of Kogor. That is where Pharaoh lives. Ba'ul can take us there. Okay, let's go. This meeting's been a long time coming. I can communicate with Ba'ul. But there are still a few things you should know. Like what? 
bow can only land on the ground in wide, open spaces, so you won't be able to dismount on steep mountain ranges or in narrow canyons. Can't he land on water? Water's no good either. Really? He looks like he'd be a good swimmer. <laughs> yeah, he'd sink like a rock. Huh, who knew? But that's why we have a ship, right? Right. If you'd like to get down onto the ocean, let me know. Bo will set our ship down there for us. Okay, but what should we do when we want to fly again? Use Baul's horn to call him to you. Baul's... That's all there is to it? Every Intelikea has a special region in its brain that can be used for communication with a special power Critians possess. Huh. So we can get a hold of him by using that. Right. Judith, you're familiar with Pharaoh, aren't you? Is he really as scary as he seems? Well, let's see. Sometimes he's logical, sometimes he's emotional. He can be really scary or really kind. All right, that didn't help very much. One thing's certain, his power is extraordinary, even among the Intelikea. Here's hoping we don't wind up looking like poor old Mount Temza the moment we meet him. If he can do that to a mountain, there wouldn't be anything left if he turned on us. I wish you wouldn't joke about scary things like that. Why should we get scared before we even get there? Especially if he's that strong. Wish I could take it as lightly as you and Yuri. I never imagined you'd be able to speak with the Intelikea. Well, I use a Critian technique to do it. Wait, do I detect a little jealousy? Mm, maybe. Right, Rapide? <clears throat> Yuri, you want to talk to Rapide? I think the two of you understand each other well enough already. I got him pretty well figured out, but I don't know if he understands me. <clears throat> I think he feels the same way.
So this is where Pharaoh is? Should be. I wasn't able to see him when we came to the desert, but I think this is where we can meet him. I hope nothing bad will happen. What if he suddenly attacks us? I can't make any guarantees. I don't think we'll have a say in the matter. That just means we need to do our best so nothing bad happens. Carol, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I should go. Pharaoh sure did pick a bleak place to live in, don't you think? They say this area used to be covered in lush greenery. Why did it turn into this rocky desert? Hmm, I don't know that much. Estelle, are you really going to meet him? Even though you could be killed? Yes, I've already made peace with this decision. Rita, you've been acting a little funny ever since hearing Judy's story on the ship. Do you have a problem with meeting Pharaoh? I just think it'll be hard on her to hear what he has to say. But it's too late to turn back now. We've come this far after all. We're taking a nap. Pharaoh? You're here, aren't you? Ah! Insipid poison. You appear before me at last. So you are here. Is that how you greet all your guests, Pharaoh? By calling them names? For what reason have you come to me? Surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. <laughs> you talk pretty big, don't you? Well, if you really want to fight, I'd hate to disappoint you. Yuri, no! Everyone, please wait! Estelle! Pharaoh, please hear what I have to say. Does death hold no fear for you, little one? For you gaze now into the mouth of death itself. I am afraid, but I'm even more afraid of dying without knowing who I really am. Bellius told me I needed to meet you to learn about my destiny. I have to know just what that destiny is. I understand that I am a threat to the Entelikea, but you said that I am a poison to this world. What is this power I have? Just who is the child of the full moon? If it is true that my existence cannot be tolerated, then it's okay if I have to die. But I at least deserve to know why it is I have to die. Please tell me. I beg of you. There was a time when this was a verdant land, sheltered by the blessing of an air crene. So there was an air crene here. But what happened? Why did it change? What you see are the results of too much air and its aftermath. As to why the air ran rampant, the answer lies with the poison brought by the Child of the Full Moon. Huh? The power of the Child of the Full Moon stimulates the air crene more than any Blastia. Huh? Blastia convert air into energy by way of a formula. So if Estelle can use her healing arts without the aid of any Blastia... She must possess a formula in her very being that lets her convert air into energy. Judith was searching for Blastia that used a particular kind of formula. So, this special formula Estelle has must also consume massive amounts of air, which causes the air crene to become more active and pump out more air than they should. I had hoped my hypothesis would have been wrong. Then I... It is as she has said... With each use of her power, the Child of the Full Moon uses far more air than the Blastia. In so doing, the imbalance of air in this world is furthered. For the planet, such an existence can only be called a poison. So you just wipe it out then? Little quick to judge, aren't you, Pharaoh? 
This problem concerns the entire planet, and she is its cause. To do nothing would be unparalleled folly. If the problem's with Estelle, then it's for us to solve. That's right. We can't let anyone else handle it. The gravity of this situation is beyond your grasp. You don't honestly think that everything's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows if Estelle dies, do you? It would at least eliminate one problem. Pharaoh, at Heliord I stopped myself. And again at Dawngrest I stopped you. What I thought was a Blastia turned out to be a human. Before I realized it, I had lost my way. I never thought this child could be as great a danger as you had said. And due to your confusion, I granted you the time necessary to see things as they are. As a result, my sister Belius is now lost to me. Enough. This power will bring only ruin. Hmm, not sure I understand all this, but if her power's the problem, why can't she just not use it? There can be no guarantee she will not try to use the power. That's true. She does have trouble turning a blind eye to things happening around her. Someday she will surely use her power to help someone. However, as long as she keeps that spirit of compassion, she cannot only be seen as harmful. She is not like Ablastia. I know that you can feel the difference. Compassion alone will not save this world. Listen, Pharaoh. I get that you've thought all this through with everybody's best interest in mind, but why doesn't that world have a place for Estelle? It is sometimes necessary to remove a part to save the whole. I don't buy that for a second. What makes you so high and mighty that you're the one to decide who gets cut and who doesn't? We have endured the anxiety of existence for far greater a span than you can conceive. Such words mean nothing from those who call this world home for but a fleeting moment. Pharaoh, please listen. The important thing is finding a way to stop the excessive air, correct? We still have time left to search for such a thing. Judith! And if... If the effects of Estelle's power reach their absolute limit, I will kill her as promised. You should have no complaint with this. Hey, Judith, are you serious? I'm sure brave Vesperia will come up with something before that happens, right? What? I... um... Yeah, yeah, of course we will! Well, score one for Judith. So that settles it. If we humans are to blame for Estelle's problem and bringing on the apocalypse, then it's up to us to make things right. If we give it all we've got and still blow it, then you can slow roast us on a grill for all I care. You have changed. If you were still as before... Have I? That is nice to hear. Very well. Be ever mindful, though, that time is fleeting. Wait! If the formulas are causing the excessive air, then there must have been times when this happened in the past. I mean, the Blastia were a product of an ancient civilization. There exist those who have inherited the sins of the past. If any yet can speak of what occurred in the days of old, it is they. He's gone! Bye-bye! Um, I... Thanks for everything, Yuri. Judith, you too. No problem. But hey... What? It's okay if I have to die? What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that again. I'm sorry. Man, I was really worried there for a while. We were pretty lucky that bruiser was in a mood for conversation. Poor Raven's heart can't handle that sort of stuff anymore. You're pretty gutless for an old man. Jeez, Patty, you've really got nerves of steel. If he really wanted to kill Estelle, he'd have attacked us immediately. And that's what I can't figure out. I imagine Pharaoh was conflicted as well. He hid himself from us in the desert to see just what we were made of. Huh. Maybe he wasn't as bad as we thought after all. You might be right. I get the feeling he'd do whatever's necessary when push comes to shove. 
That sounds like you. Maybe. But what are we gonna do, Yuri? You heard what he said. We're going to fix the problems the air's causing, and that's all. That's easier said than done. We're pretty much at square one, you know. Mm-hmm. And no one wants to be at square one. There's no doubt that the formulas are related somehow to the air getting used up. We need to find out about the ancient Blastia, and if they went berserk or not. If we had that kind of information, it might give us a clue. Ask those who have inherited the sins of the past about the days of old. Or at least that's what Pharaoh said. The Critia were the ones to invent the Blastia. In other words, we need to ask a Critian who is still familiar with the old stories. Yeah, the Critia are often credited as the inventors of the Blastia. There isn't much left of the Critian city of Timza, though. It'd be a lot easier if there were more cities. The hidden city of Miorzo. It is far older than Timza, and the birthplace of the Critia. The first Blastia also originated there. Really? Well, what do you know? You wouldn't happen to know where this Miorzo might be, would you, darling? Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. There was a Critian in Ospio. I'm sure they mentioned something about it. Do you think that person might still be there? Well, there's no harm in checking it out. Judith, are you coming with us? I should. We still have the issue of the guild to straighten out. So, to Ospio then. All that stuff about the balance of the world is pretty hard to take in. Yeah. I hadn't even been outside the capital until just a while ago myself. And now we're here talking about the fate of the world. You never know what life will bring you. But isn't that what makes it interesting? I don't think we can afford to be that relaxed anymore. Estelle doesn't have much time left. What's the harm? It's not as if acting all serious is going to solve anything. Besides, Estelle will notice if we look all worried. Well, maybe so, but... We won't forget what Pharaoh said. Relax. I know, it's just... Estelle's got it the worst. If we get too down about this, we won't be much help to her.
It's been another long day. Let's save the manhunt for tomorrow. Uh, I second that. Oh, how long's it been since I've slept in a proper bed? Well, I suppose we can all stay at my place. Wait, there's something I want to take care of first. You mean me? Carol? This is a guild thing. Best for us not to get involved. I've thought about it a lot. What we should do, like, as a guild. And I realized, we have to figure out a few things if we're going to keep this guild going. It sounds like you've decided what we should do. Well, we said it before. The most important thing is obeying the guild's laws. Those who break the laws suffer strict punishment, even if they're friends or family. They say that's the source of a guild's pride. Yes. So what I'm thinking is, we all have to receive punishment. What do you mean? I didn't know that Judith was fighting for our planet all on her own. But even though I didn't know, I still failed to help a fellow guild member. So I gotta accept my punishment. Yuri? Me? Maybe you were trying to follow your own path, but you still kept things hidden from us. There's no way that can be for the good of the guild. Well... So you gotta be punished too. Now he's stretching it. The laws are important. What if someone does the right thing, but still breaks the law? Should they be punished? To be honest, I just don't know yet. So that's why we should all just accept our punishment and start over from scratch. What do you think? I can't promise I won't have my secrets in the future. Well, if that's the way it is, if you can't trust us, then there's nothing you can do. That would be my fault. And what if I destroy a Blastia that our guild was planning on using again? That would be breaking the law that says I should act in the interest of the guild. But you'd also be acting for the sake of the world. Guilds aren't there just so people can obey their laws. I think we can let that slide. Um, doesn't that sort of make your laws meaningless? <laughs> I've never heard of a guild like this before. But you've got me interested, I'll give you that much. There's no need to be such a stickler for the rules. Gotta be more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, you're just full of surprises. I had thought plenty about myself and what I should be doing. But I might not have considered how my actions would affect you guys. This is a way of settling things I didn't even realize existed. I... I just wanted to keep traveling with all of you. I just wanted each of our own paths to be the same as Brave Asperia's. <laughs> Sounds alright with me. You heard the man, Judy. I guess that's where we stand. You really are some of the oddest people I've ever met. But... I suppose I can manage to put up with you. Alright then, one more time! Brave Vesperia, fall out! They're just making it up as they go, aren't they? Is that all a guild is? <laughs> the Don ran his guild just a teensy bit differently. There's something beautiful about this way, though. Brave Vesperia sure is nice. Do you want to join too, Patty? Can't right now. Oh yeah. You still have to get your memory back. So, what about the punishment? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Um... Looks like you guys are on Critian Researcher Detail. We'll be relaxing at my place. Hey, why do you get to decide? Excuse me? Did I hear a complaint? <laughs> no, ma'am. No. Uh-uh. Carol, were you thinking by yourself this whole time about what to do with Judy? Yeah, it was pretty much all I thought about after we left Nordopolica. That... and about what you did to Rago and Kumor. Really? It's nice to hear you thought about me that much, even when I wasn't around. Yeah, I wasn't sure at first what was right, what was wrong. I think I have the Dawn to thank for setting me straight. Without the Dawn's last words, I never would have found answers to the questions I had. You gotta stand on your own two feet. Yeah. I was thinking about what that meant. And before I knew it, I wasn't thinking about what was right. I was thinking about what I want to do. And that helped you decide what to do with the guild. Yeah. So here's to fresh starts. Yeah. To fresh starts.
you're searching for, Miorzo? That's the name of the city that they talk about in the Critian legends. That's all I know. Location? I don't know where it is. And even if I knew, I don't think it will be of any good to tell it to someone other than a Critian. Good day. Good day, my sister. Judith. I'm Tort. You wouldn't happen to know anything about Miorzo, would you? I'd like to go there. I need to know where Miorzo is located, and how I can get there. Even if you reach the city, there won't be anything for you to see there. But what do you plan on doing there, anyway? Is not a Critian's interest in her own ancestral city reason enough to go? That is an acceptable reason. But I'm afraid I don't know anything about where it could be. I've heard your name before, Tort. You help guide those Critians remaining on Earth up to the heavens. Will you not tell me because these humans are with me? Our ancient law states that we cannot show anyone but our brothers and sisters the way to Miorzo. Shouldn't it be a matter of whether they can be trusted rather than whether they're Critian or not? At the very least, these humans can be trusted. I shall ask once more. Why do you seek Miorzo? The world is headed towards some bad things, all thanks to Blastia. We want to go to know what happened in the past and how we can stop it. We want to help everyone, not just the Critians. How's that? Very well. I do not know if you'll find the answers to your questions, but I will show you the way. First of all, you'll need a special bell to open the path to Miorzo. A bell? Indeed. It is hidden in one of the southern caverns on the continent of Hippionia. But isn't Hippionia really big? The cavern is on a shore where red flowers bloom. If you use that as your guide, I'm sure you shall find it. Also, the door in the back of that cavern can only be opened by us Critians. What do you mean? Don't worry, I'll see that we're allowed to enter. And? What are we supposed to do with that bell? Relax. You humans are always so impatient. Once you have the bell, you must travel to Egathor Forest. The Egathor Forest? Isn't that on Hippionia too? I've heard of it before. Yes, the sacred land of the Critians is located there. So that's where the door to Miorzo is. If you use the bell there, the door shall open. There is, however, a problem. A problem? Yes. Egathor Forest is being devastated by a mysterious group. In addition to their overwhelming numbers, they also carry with them strange Blastia. I cannot fathom their motives, but this is certainly a matter of great concern. So if we go to Miorzo, we have to do something about them? Exactly. We need you to restore peace to our sacred land. Gotcha. So we get that bell, beat the mysterious group senseless, ring the bell, and the door opens. That sound right? Indeed. I understand. Thank you. May the road rise up to meet you, sister. And you as well. Let's go back to where everyone's waiting. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't bad, Carol. I have to say, I really didn't expect to hear that again. Come to think of it, Judy doesn't ask about that at all. Oh, should I? Would it be a problem? Well, even if you don't ask, the answer is still clear to you. I'm not sure about that. Even so, you're still you, and I'm still me. If our paths are the same, I'll travel with you. If I didn't think they were, I wouldn't be here. So everything is clear to you, see? I'm pretty sure what I'm thinking is clear to you as well. Is it something like, people who choose the same path think alike? Did you find out anything? We've got a lead in a place called Egathor Forest. I'm pretty 
sure it's on the west side of Hippionia, to the south of here. So, Miorzo's in that forest? No, but a door is. Huh? A door? What do you mean? There's a door there that leads to Miorzo. We were told the bell that opens the door is hidden in a cavern on a shore in Hippionia, where red flowers bloom. It'd be fastest to just go and check it out. First, let me rest. Perhaps we should get some rest before leaving? But... We don't really have a choice. All right, then I'm gonna walk around town and search for clues about the treasure. Hey, hold it, you should really... Hey, she's gone already. Anyway, once we've gotten some rest, let's go look for that cavern in Hippionia. Find any clues about the Maristella? Hmm, there were a lot of books, but none of them were about Eifried. Well, duh. This city only has books about Blastia. Oh well, looks like I'm just gonna have to keep searching for clues with you guys. Did you just say Eifried? Huh? Hey, you. You that girl they've been saying is Eifried's grandchild? Hmm. So, you neither admit nor deny it. And I guess it must be true. Interesting. So you're the grandchild of that bastard who disgraced the guilds. <laughs> you just look like a regular brat to me. Hmm. Why don't you say something? Can't even defend your own grandfather? Oh yeah, I guess that's something no one could ever defend, huh? Considering all the nasty stuff he did. How can you say such horrible things? How? Well, because it's the truth. Hey, wait! You guys must be Sirens Fang's newest guild members, right? We're Brave Vesperia! Brave Vesperia? What a funny name. What kind of a guild is that? Well, it's, uh... You see... Why, you gonna give us some good jobs if we tell you? I don't have any jobs to give shady thugs involved with Eifried like you guys. Brave Vesperia, huh? It's good-for-nothing trash like you who've been tarnishing what it means to be a guild. You're the good-for-nothing trash who's been tarnishing the name of the city. Y you you're Rita Mordio? It looks like there's a lot more vulgar pieces of trash than the last time I was here. Jeez, it'll be a real nuisance if anyone thinks I'm associated with you. Let's get out of here. Wait! Oh? Was there something else you wanted to say? N no mm. But what are we gonna do? I'm pretty sure that guy's gonna spread rumors. I don't care. If that's the kind of thing that could destroy our guild, we would have been finished a long time ago. Yeah, we should just let people say what they're going to say. I... Wasn't our destination ashore in Hippionia where red flowers bloom? Ah, yeah. Then let's get going. Mm. 